What skin and chroma am I using? Uh, Spirit Blossom with one of the blue chromas. I think it's the dark blue one. Because I don't have any other skins on this account other than, like, Spirit Blossom. I might have Shadowfire, but this is a really old account I had, so I don't have any of the new skins on it. Because I'm not buying skins on an old account. Emo Kindred? I mean, I, I, I would not be opposed to, like, you know, a Goth-themed Kindred skin. I, I, I feel like everybody who knows me knows this already, but that's beside the point. You don't feel like, or you don't like being paired up with people who are high level? If it makes you feel any better, a level in League means absolutely nothing, considering you get level from all kind of, like, every game mode, and on top of that... A lot of people, no matter what level they are, a vast majority of the league player base is low elo. A vast majority of the league player base, like 80% of the player base is like gold or below. So if it makes you feel any better, if you're new, I can't let two of those live or I don't get my level four. I just screwed up my entire clear. But if it makes you feel any better, the level really doesn't matter, like at all. You feel like a oh, golf kinder would be a pretty good skin line for them? I am biased in no way towards anything gothic related, but I'm okay with this. I'm not biased. Don't listen to anything chat tells you. people on bronze with like millions of mastery points and stuff yep because at the end of the day a level and mastery is just all like a relevant thing for the most part because a lot of people stay bad at the game because they don't want to learn the game properly either because they just play the game casually for fun or because they just like to blame other people and never look for their own mistakes a little bit of both Okay, I got a flash. That's fine with me. I'll branch him out the river. I don't know if I can fight him. Ooh, it's actually pretty solid. I kind of can't shove your wave. I, I do want me to stay. I, you know, I don't have flash and you want me to stay in your lane. All right, if I die here, I don't want to hear any flaming because I ain't trying to die to your trundle. Because I got to shut down. Your lane is fine. Your, your lane is completely fine. You should have for one TP back to your lane instead of walking back. Oh, wait, you did TP back after 30 seconds. My bad. Your lane is fine, though. Do I no longer have Sudden Impact? Sudden Impact isn't as great as good as it used to be. Sudden Impact doesn't give you lethality anymore. It just gives you a bit of damage after a dash, like, on, like, a 10-second cooldown or something. So it's not really good like it used to be. It's not terrible, and you can use it if you really want to, but it's not what it used to be. I'm run top lane and get another kill top. Realistically, you probably get more damage out of eyeball collection in a game than you do sudden impact. And if you don't want to go for that, then just take magical footwear and cosmic insight for more smites and the 300 free gold on boots plus the extra 10 movement speed on boots. Those are better too. All right, now, just because I have to talk my shit a little bit, though, chat, just remember, hashtag, my lane is over, me 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 my lane is over. Well, you could have froze the wave, and on top of that, I came back and killed your laner with you again. So if you're still complaining, that's on you, you know? Wolf chases what does 
not willingly go. Trace to your heart's content. Dude, Lilia was bot side, so there's a decent chance this crab's gonna mark in a second. Unless her chickens are up, yeah, I didn't think they were. There's a decent chance that crab when it swans marks. Why didn't I hit the vision point? I know this may come as a surprise to none of you. I might be an idiot. I don't care if Lily is here. How long will we be together? There's my crabby mark. He has no ult. She Gragas can't die to her unless he misplays really hard. And fourth mark, easy. How is that? How you doing? We are not dreams. We are the waking. I will chase it until the end. Wait, why is Draven dead? Enemy Who said Draven? Shut down. I smell prey. Aha, I still get the mark off of you now, no matter what you do now. Thank you, I appreciate. It's worth, this is genuinely worth it for me. I get the mark off him no matter what. So, yeah. He could have just taken the blast plan himself and I wouldn't have fought him because he could have executed at that point. So I don't know why he didn't do that, but I'm okay with it either way. You know what? Probably gonna die for this. Yeah. I'm probably gonna die for this, but. Oh, Bren's already here. <laughs> huh? Why did my vein just do that? Okay, well, we don't go bot side. <clears throat> we do not go bot side. They could have, like, they genuinely would have won that fight because Draven was extremely low. All Vayne has to do is kill him there, and then, like, with Morgana, they win that fight. Because Morgana can Black Shield, Vayne can't get stunned by Bran, and Thresh doesn't really have damage at that point. I don't really know why she did that, but it is what it is, I guess. Was the secret behind the fact that every time you go for three to six marks to 20, you, I mean... Tracking marks, marking the enemy. That's kind of just how you get marks. Not throwing the game for marks and just making sure that your pathing will lead you to a mark and paying attention to what's alive on the map. Like, I mean, that's really all there is to it. It's just paying attention to how the game is. Like, I, I can't really give you another answer because that's genuinely it. I mean, I'm not even good at manipulating my marks when I stream because I focus too heavily on talking to chat, and so I don't, like, change my mark a lot of the time, and I don't pay attention to what's alive in the enemy jungle either. But, like, just for example, right now, I know her blue buff is dead. I know these Krugs are dead considering, in fact, the mark was displaced, which means she was killing them. 
I know the red buff's dead, so the only thing that will be alive next that can potentially mark if she doesn't kill it off spawn would be wolves, but odds are she's going to go towards bot side, so her wolves should be dead off spawn. So realistically, the next mark that spawns will either be the blue or it will be the Krugs when they respawn. Unless she doesn't kill her wolves. If she doesn't kill her wolves, it'll mark here in like 10 20 seconds. But they should be dead. Should, keyword. You can't control people being dumb and clearing weird. Wow, that thing got fucking nuked. Holy shit. Oh, there's the wolf mark. He didn't kill the wolves. So, oh, there you go. All will know us in time. Brand? It wasn't Brand, it was Draven. Like, Brand was on it, but Brand's not what did all that damage. The Draven is what did all the damage. The Draven's insanely fed. Like, he's got Collector plus a BF Sword already. He's so fucking fed right now. I don't know where Bram went. You rude bitch. I will end you. Nah, I'm not gonna go chase. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go collector. I'm gonna go out crit, even though I shouldn't this game. I really should just build the like 1v9 carry build and not just try to do go for a full on damage build. But I'm gonna trust the fact that my Gragas will be useful later, even though with how far the rest of my team is behind, it's not worth it. Why does Morgana build Zanya's first? Because have you ever tried to play Morgana? Walking up to an enemy where your entire ult is designed around waiting around a delay to CC them sucks ass if you get one shot by the enemy team. Okay, without Zanyas, you don't ever get your ult off. I mean, I know building on hit is much better for 1v9ing a game because you have survivability and damage. Building crit is honestly not great unless you can reliably only need to do damage and not have to worry about anything but damage. You guys win that fight. Why are you walking away? You win the fight. Just win the fight. You have a Kaliol. Just win the fight. Oh my god. You missed your Akaliol. Like, they hard win that fight. I don't know why they're so scared. I killed Draven, the only one on their team who was relevant in that fight. Get a mark out of that. I'm not gonna mess with his waves, so when he bitches, it's not my fault. I'm kind of trolling here. Oh, I just killed myself for that. Yep. Oof. I walked into that. Okay, Kali, you got this. I got faith in you. You can do it. Just press R. Thank you.
Why is Akali running at her kunai, like, picking up her kunai? Like, I, as far as I know, you don't need to run towards her kunai on the ground to, do, to, to like, get in. Like, that's not a thing with Akali, right? Like, I'm not an Akali player, but I don't think that's a mechanic. I'd be lying if I said it was a surprise that my bot lane was getting shit on the way they are because realistically anytime somebody picks vein bot it tends to go that way because vein is just not a very good bot laner Oh, that slow is gonna probably save him. Okay, no, I got him. Nice. Kind of surprised it took Trundle that long to get that turret. This is the pack range after Q feels longer. Ow. Please stop walking next to me. Did, 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 did you? Yeah, I'm assuming you already used your shield. I don't know where she used her shield, but I'm assuming she used her shield on something. Are we fighting this? Raven just got scammed. Like, straight up scammed there. Because your Q repositions you into all the range. That's why I would feel like that. Come on, pick it up. Okay, well, I already have so much gold. I'm just gonna buy the Infinity Edge at this point because there's a bigger actual spike than the fucking. what the collector is, so. No reason not to. And you struggle with ganking. I don't know if you can actually hear me because I'm pretty sure Twitch just played ads. But you can hear me. I mean, ganking is just all about knowing matchups and also with, like the state of a lane. Like depending on positioning and stuff and where people are like on the map, what CC your laners have, if you're like you, you, whatever your champ has, all that stuff affects it. Do you wa even want to like try to force a wave? Can the enemy laner like 2v1 you? There's so many different things that affect it. That's my cannon. I don't think they would do Baron early on like that. I feel like they would have to be very um, desperate to even want to try that. Or insane. Or both, realistically. Obviously this is gone, but I'm gonna come check it anyways. Here is the chase for 
Yeah. He actually almost killed Draven, too. Kind of sad. The vein panic ulted right there. The second she thought she saw Thresh, she insta ulted, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you're insane if you think my empty ass ain't chasing those goals. Hi, man. Hi, kitty kitty. How do you play Kindred versus Evelyn? Buy MR. Buy MR and hope that your teammates know what a pink ward is. My, my, uh, can you stop taking infinite screenshots, please? No sleepy on the keyboard. You can sleep anywhere but the keyboard. Here, let me move. There you go. Hey, cool. My big demon kitty. We're going to reward this, obviously. That was another Thresh Ward. You might put another one down. You will. Again, here's a little new player tip too if you're still new to the game. And I've said it all the time and I'll say it again. If you don't know, the wards from a support item are worth more gold than a ward from a normal, like, from, like, a normal stealth ward. So if it's 30 gold overall for the ward, it's a support item ward. If it's like 10 or 15 gold or whatever, then it's the, uh, it's just a stealth ward. Why the hell are we doing this? I don't know, but we're going to do it. Because you attacked it and now I want it dead because it hit me. How did you not know that? Because most people don't know the little things unless they're trying really, really, really hard to learn the game. But most people don't try that hard to learn the game. There's a lot of little things that most people don't pay attention to simply because they don't try hard enough to learn the game. That feel when Draven accidentally killed himself because he clicked out and Thresh Lantern on accident. I'm still probably going to die to the burn, aren't I? Oh, nope. Try and save me. Because the brand died. Yeah, there's a lot of little details in the game that most people don't know because most people don't have spent the time to. 
and you can take advantage of that information it can actually affect your play like knowing like again knowing if a support was the one who warded because you know how much the gold is worth you can know how like if it's a really fresh ward you can know the supports around if you're not sure and stuff but it's only something that will minorly influence the game for most people or most people won't put it into any use in their game so they don't like pay attention to it Again, it's just, like realistically getting good at the game and learning the game isn't hard it's just if you actually want to put in the effort and you want to apply even the minor little things to improve your gameplay even a little bit or help you in a little bit. But most people don't do that. Looking on words shows you who put it down, not on the enemy team. This does not show you who put down the pink board. It only will show you your own teams. It will only show you the source if it's on your team. What the hell? They might trade Baron for the dragon, but that's fine if they do. I'm not really worried if they get it. But they probably get Baron. If they're 100% gonna go Baron. Yep. That's fine. It won't be super detrimental to us with how they're playing. Unless my team ints for the dragon fight or Baron fight. Nope, they're gonna int for this, aren't they? Gragas might have killed himself. Actually, that's a huge fight if my team was there to follow up and help Gragas. That's a, I, they would have actually just killed three of them there, at least. I'm extremely strong. If I have my abilities up, I will kill whoever comes over here. Except for maybe Brand, to be fair, because he can stun me. But I'm not too worried about Brand. Oh my god, I just got fucking knocked out of my ult. That was actually so troll. I got knocked out of my ult. Bane should get three here if she plays this well. Okay, maybe not. She tumbled into melee range of Trundle. I entered there, don't get me wrong, but like she tumbled into melee range of Trundle. Maybe not the best play. Maybe not the best play. It's okay though. Jesus Christ, that damage though. so hard you're feeling bad for your teammates dude you're new to the game let yourself th th don't worry about that stuff when you're new to the game you, for one no matter who you are you can be the best player in the world you're gonna have really bad empty games that happens to quite literally the rank one players the best like pro players everybody has bad games let yourself have a bad game learn from the bad game if you know you did something stupid try not to do it next game What are we doing, Groggy? Yeah, Groggy. That's unfortunate. That was not who we wanted there. 
I'll kill you if you come over here. Zero, six, and one. I mean, eh, that happens all the time. Dude, again, people in Pope Boy do get bad games like that. People in High Uo in all the time. It doesn't matter what your KDA is. KDA is not a relevant stat, realistically, unless you're a bad player. Because at the end of the day, your KDA means you. your KDA can be high from you deciding to not participate in a fight and only last at low health people. If you don't get objectives or your damage share and shit is just extremely low, it doesn't matter what your KDA is. League's not Team Deathmatch. It's, it's not a Team Deathmatch game. League is still an objective-based game where you need to play the map well and actually play the game well. Your KDA is not important if you don't play the map well. If I get 10 kills, but I, do, I don't get any objectives, I never push with my team, I'm never in the right spot at the right time, my kills mean nothing at the end of the day. No, the thresh play was barely in range. Oh my god, and Lily, oh wait, okay, Vane got her. All right. I just every game because it's the honest truth so many people fixate on the wrong things and it's the reason why they stagnate getting better at the game because they'll focus on the wrong thing they'll be like oh i died this game you know me dying is clearly the only thing that matters it's like well was your death worth did you gain did your team gain anything for your death when you were alive were you in like a good position like if you don't if you only focus on a death without any context what would you're not going to learn anything from it you don't gain anything from that It, again, it's not a team deathmatch game. You need to learn from how the map is and things. Everybody says they want to get better and learn the game, but half of pe like half the player base refuses to do anything but look at KDA and blame their teammates. Wham, my top lane's feeding. Wham, blah, 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 whatever. Obviously not my top lane in this game, but like my bot lane is extremely behind. But you know what? My bot lane's been really fucking useful this game. The vein has been following up on most of the plays that I do, and Morg has been there for most of the plays as well. I'm just gonna flash that, and I'm not even gonna bother trying to walk up in queue because I was worried that I was gonna get, like, fucking CC to flash on. I'm not gonna lie to you. I probably didn't need the flash there, and by probably, I definitely didn't need to, but I just was not risking anything. Is it beneficial to look up ways to gank well with certain champions? I mean, again, ganking well is... You can see how other people play it, but you, if you don't understand certain matchups in the game flow itself, it's not going to really mean much. Like, again, for example... It, I always use this as an example because it's always, a, like, an easy example. If my mid laner picks something like Katarina that has no CC, and I am playing Kindred that also has almost no CC other than a slow... And the enemy is playing LeBlanc mid. I could try to gank LeBlanc mid to my heart's content, but 90% of the time we're not killing LeBlanc because LeBlanc's just going to dash away and we can't stop her. A lot of times you're not going to accomplish anything there. And if you if you know for certain you're not going to get a sum, your laner doesn't need you to help reset the wave or anything, and you're not going to gain anything whatsoever, and you're not going to get a turret or something, then a lot of times that's not worth it. It, it comes with learning what different champions do and what, how different lanes are and understanding wave states and stuff. Because, again, some lanes you're just not going to get anything done in. And it doesn't matter how much they baby rage and try to flame you, there's just some lanes where it's just not going to happen. As much as you wanted to. Or they wanted to. We win the game. Like, looking up one tricks and stuff of a champion you want to play, yeah, that's that's useful to learn, like, clearing and stuff, but... Oh, yeah, and ganking and things really just depends on how the game's going.
I did a little bit of damage that game. Just a wee bit. Please stop picking Lilia against Kindred. Look, Kindred shits on this champ, bro. Also, please start picking Kindred against Lilia. It's really free. I still don't get why people don't take advantage of this matchup. Lilia's like super meta a lot of the time this season. It's so fucking free. I don't know. Maybe I'll upload this to YouTube since I haven't uploaded in a few days. If I do, um, well, like and comment or something and look at my stream and Discord and stuff in the description. I don't know. Yeah.